Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Topic Tuesdays with Tim. Tonight's episode is Mindful and Mentally Ready for Exams. We are very excited to have you all on for our sixth night in a row. And we are here tonight with Dr. Tim Miller, VP of Student Affairs. And my name is Rebecca Barge. And my name is Carson Lonnett. We are acting as your moderators today for Topic Tuesdays with Tim. Just a couple like housekeeping things. You can put your cameras on, but feel free to mute yourself just to eliminate some outside noise. You're also at any point um, more than will or feel free to also unmute yourself and ask any questions. You can also put them in the chat. Um, but we are just going to go ahead and get started. Um, I'm going to throw it over to Tim. All right. Well, welcome everybody. Um, Excited to have you all here. We're gonna have some people that are much smarter on these areas than me to talk to you all in a little bit. Um, so I'm excited to have Nina and Sherry here with you all. Um, but I thought I would just share a little bit uh, sort of how I sort of manage stress and when I do it well and when I don't um, and how I sort of manage through things and then um, we'll kick it around to the different experts here. But I um, also have some props tonight too. So hopefully that will be Fun. So I was thinking the other day, I remember December of, the, of basically, I guess, last year uh, was kind of a lowish period for me. Just things were really busy and I was struggling to keep up and I sort of lost track of my fitness regimen. Um, and I realized that there are certain signs for me that are when I know things aren't where they need to be and um, thought I would share because I think for all of us, our signs look different or our moments look different. Um, for me, some of them are physical type things. So one, uh, there, when I'm sort of not at my best, there tend to be a, a higher number of takeout or delivery containers around the house. Um, so I tend to have a, when I'm down, I spend money. Um, so and I also don't like to cook or like to sort of eat the balance things that I really should. Um, so, you know, there's tends to be a lot more um, Chinese restaurant type stuff, uh, taste of Thai in there. Um, some of my favorite places around. So just as a for me, that's one. The other one is, again, going back to the money thing, uh, there tends to be an overwhelming number of Amazon boxes about. Um, so I'll do what Jamie calls late night buying, um, which is rarely ever good. Um, I find anything you buy after 10 p.m. is usually not the best life choice. Um, so there end up being a lot of those. And I have a side room over here. Uh, and when I can't walk through easily, I know I've done too much. Um, and then another is a lack of working out. Uh, I just know that when I'm not doing that on a regular basis, that just really sort of sets me sort of on edge with what I'm trying to do. And I don't know if balance is the right word, but just not, not where I need to be. Centered maybe is a better word. And the other is not reading. Uh, I really love to read. And some of my reading is what I've been called, what's been called to me cheating reading, meaning I listen to audiobooks. But I think however you consume material is great. Just do it your own way. Uh, but I find when I get out of that, so I think when I'm not, my body's not working and my brain's not working, um, and I'm just sort of trying to fix that with spending or eating food uh, that just sort of, you know, will make me, Kleins is another big problem uh, on the food thing. I mean, those are the moments when I know it's just not settling in. So um, I want to share a couple different things. One of the things that really helps me uh, when I know that I'm sort of in a good place is organizing. Uh, I'm a perpetual organizer. Uh, and yet, uh, Jamie especially would say that I'm not necessarily organized, just that I'm an organizer. So um, I, I'll break my earlier rule. I did actually buy some, do some Amazon shopping this weekend, but because I was up at our house in Northern Virginia and I was really bothered by the, the tool area in our garage, uh, we have a couple different buckets that are attached to a pegboard that I put in. And there's just a bucket there with just everything. It's sort of the dumping bucket of everything. Um, so today I'm very excited in my... Uh, in today's Amazon shipment, I got these uh, nice little organizers that'll hang up on the pegboard. Uh, I did a lot of research on these. I actually spent 30 minutes on this uh, $15 purchase uh, to buy the right ones. So excited to have those. There's four different sizes, so I can put all different size things in there. I'm gonna get the box out of the way. The other thing, as we learned, um, I think this was last week, I have a Lego issue. Um, so I won't show you the, the new 950 piece set I just got, um, mostly because I've already organized it and put it in my new uh, organizer system. Actually, I should probably show you that because it shows you the level of 
my problem. Um, so I, I think I showed you last week that I had um, Tupperware. I have now, oh wait, I gotta get rid of the background again. Um, I gotta get rid of the Millennium Falcon. Um, that I was not satisfied with that setup of the Tupperware. So I've now purchased this other item. And uh, as you can imagine, um, if you know anything about those of us that are a little focused on organization, each different type of piece has its own little section. Um, so another little insight into the life that is mine. Um, but uh, there, I've had this one thing on my mind for a while of the Lego genre. Um, because I only want to have Legos in my office that look, I don't know, not adult because they're Legos, so that's not possible. Um, but they have this um, ship in a bottle um, from a thing called Lego Ideas. And what Lego Ideas is, is that actual people that love Lego actually create it. And then if enough people vote for it on the Lego website, it gets created and then they get I think they might get 1% of everything that's ever bought. Um, so I gave, just gave them 1% of $59 uh, this week, whatever, and I'll let someone else that's math oriented do that math. Um, but anyway, uh, share that. And then the other thing I'll just share, um, sort of a guilty thing. Um, I just started watching Outer Banks last night. Uh, I don't know if anyone's watching that on, uh, I think Netflix, right? Yeah. Um, the saddest thing about it is uh, it's totally cheesy, totally feels a little bit like um, either the OC to me um, or um, uh, what's the other one? The Ravens, the basketball, the brothers, the two brothers, same dad, different mom, One Tree Hill. There you go. Thanks. Uh, <laughs> feels very much like that. There's definitely like the kids from the wrong side of the tracks, the rich kids from the right side of the tracks. Uh, so Outer Banks, interesting. The saddest part about that is it's not actually filmed in the Outer Banks. Uh, I love the Outer Banks, and it's actually filmed in South Carolina, which is kind of disappointing. But so anyway, I think uh, finding those things that sort of, you know, keep you interested. I basically, um, I have Outer Banks on while I'm doing other things like a puzzle that I have out now or other things that are going on. But um, I just think we all have our own thing. We have to find what works for us. Uh, you know, I think you're going to hear some perspective and advice tonight. Uh, take that and make, you know, see how it fits in your life, but just know that each of us have our own different way of managing. You know, this has obviously been a stressful time, period, but you're going into an even more stressful time with exams. Um, and also some of you might not be feeling stressed at all, and that's okay. I think we all sort of live with this differently and deal with it differently. Um, but with that, I want to, unless, Rebecca, are you okay if I kick it to Nina, or do you have an intro you're going to do? Yes, go ahead. All right. Uh, so I'm really excited to have Nina Kreitz here with us from the University Counseling Center. Uh, Nina and I have a shared love of all things Brene Brown, and I was honored to work with her on a Brene Brown book club this year with students, hoping we'll continue to do that. Uh, I know a couple of you on the call were part of that, so we appreciate uh, you participating in that and being back for Nina. So Nina, I'm going to pass it off to you. So thanks for being here. We really appreciate it. Great. Well, thank you so much for having me. I've really been looking forward to, to coming um, here tonight and being able to share some strategies uh, with each of you as you're preparing for exam week. So I have a little bit of information to share and then we'll have some time at the end, I believe, for questions and answers. So um, let's see. I'm going to start by sharing my screen here so that I can just kind of get us started with some visuals. So um, let's see. So as you're thinking about preparing for exam week, this may feel a little bit different this semester in particular, but Dr. Miller actually did a really nice job of introducing some of the pieces that are so important to attend to during this time. So to ensure that you are maintaining your energy and having sharp focus, there are really three particular areas that I would encourage you um, to be attending to. One is to regularly eat your healthy meals. Two is to move your body, preferably outside if you can. And then three is make sure that you're getting enough sleep. 
So nothing revolutionary there. And yet each of those um, pieces are so important for you to be able to do your best. One of the um, kind of common themes that I have been hearing from um, students about this transition to working um, and doing school from um, remotely is that many times students are trying to balance being in their same space um, with Kind of where they're sleeping, where they're doing their schoolwork. And so it's kind of difficult to be able to figure out what is a new schedule and how do I delineate um, working versus sleeping. And so I would encourage you to really be looking at ways to have a regular schedule and a regular routine. This can really help offer a sense of normalcy and safety. It can also um, be helpful to maintain some regular times for when you do your schoolwork and when um, you are sleeping. One strategy that seems to often be helpful is to take some breaks and create rewards for productive study time. So I have up here some different ideas of things that might be a nice self-care break. So an example would be that maybe you dedicate 45 minutes to working on a paper or reviewing a study guide and then giving yourself 10 minutes to cuddle with a pet if you have one, 10 minutes to, to do some reading, 10 minutes to walk around outside and enjoy some sunshine. And then again, going back doing another 45 minutes of work, and then taking that break. This can be a nice way to, to sort of reward yourself for focusing and getting some schoolwork done. And it can also be a nice way to be re-energizing yourself during this time. Another piece that um, can be helpful is to have some sort of process or routine to sort of separate yourself from your school time and from your rest and self-care time. So an example might be um, when you are done studying at your desk to maybe have a blanket that you tend to, to sit with that you fold up and you put on your chair and leave your study area so that you're able to um, have a bit of a routine or a process that helps signal that study time has ended and I'm now transitioning um, to going into my evening or the rest of my afternoon. Um, any sort of ritual that can help you prepare for bedtime. So maybe making a cup of sleepy time tea and having that before you go to sleep can help kind of signal to your body, this is the, this is the time that I'm gonna get ready for some rest. There um, really is a unique opportunity. I was thinking about there's, there have been so many challenges that have come with having um, so much work remotely and having so much online, but there's really this unique opportunity that students have this year to um, utilize what we call your context dependent memory. So students, actually all of us, tend to do best on exams when as much of our study um, pieces are um, duplicated when we're taking the exam. So this is really a unique opportunity that you have to be able to study at the same desk with the same um, climate and features around you that you'll have when you're taking the exam. So it can be really helpful to be intentional about creating a study space that is helpful for you. And then again, you'll be able to duplicate that when you're getting ready to take an exam and it will be easier to recall the information that you are studying. So I'm going to shift gears a little bit here and talk about one of the pieces that I think is very challenging about needing to create your own structure and your own schedule right now. And that is that we have endless opportunities to be distracted. And I love this image, um, the 
person on the left here has this mind that is full of details and distractions and all kinds of ways to, to disconnect or to um, avoid being engaged in a, a mindful way. And then we have the little puppy on the right who is mindfully present in this very moment. And so I would really encourage to think about using um, the, the technology that we have to be able to connect in an intentional fashion, to be able to feel more connected with peers or family or other supports and not allowing all of the potential distractions to make our mind so full that it's difficult uh, to focus on what the task is at hand. Um, another idea for um, ensuring that you're maybe uh, minimizing the distractions is to maybe set a timer on your phone if you notice that you're somebody who is kind of mindlessly scrolling or distracting yourself to maybe set some limits or timers so that you are, again, using technology really intentionally to connect and not to distract yourself. Finally, I would like to share with you a little bit about the Counseling Center services. This is particularly exciting right now because given um, all that has been going on with COVID-19, the Counseling Center has made accommodations to the service delivery model, and we're actually now able to offer telehealth services to students, which is so exciting, particularly because this allows us to provide services to students who are um, across the state of Virginia. And so um, we are accepting new clients. We are um, able to offer every student an intake teleconference. And then from there, we would be able to help students get connected to the most appropriate service and the resources that they are looking for and interested in. So it's very simple right now. All that a student has to do is call our counseling center. I have the number up here on um, the screen. It's also available through our counseling center website. Um, and we would just ask that students allow for at least two hours for the process from start to finish, but this would be time to complete paperwork and be able to speak with a clinician. We're able to provide support if maybe exam time is feeling particularly stressful. We would be able to help with some study strategies and skills. It may also be that the stress of being close or far from family has brought up some additional pieces. There may be some more complicated pieces and we're happy to, to provide support to any student. Some of the options that we have available would be ongoing telehealth services because of liability and legal pieces that is available only to students who are in Virginia. We can also help students connect to other campus resources. We can help students connect to community providers. And then we have lots of wonderful self-help self -help resources, um, including uh, TAO and then information available by topic. And those are all available on our Counseling Center website. We can also, again, help students get connected on their own. The last piece that I just wanted to share here is from most folks' favorite clinicians who are animal-assisted therapy dogs. Um, I just want to draw your attention to the fact that um, our four therapy dogs are very active on social media, maybe not quite as connected as Dr. Miller, but they, are, they enjoy being able to share helpful um, study strategies, mindfulness techniques, any sort of um, information as well as encouraging messages. So you are welcome to follow um, the therapy dogs on, on um, Instagram or Facebook. And as you can see, we have lots of helpful information for you there. So I know that that's a lot in a very short amount of time, but I'm just so happy to be here and I will be happy to share any um, additional information or answer any questions that you might have.
Nina, this is Tim. I wonder, can we go back for a second and talk a little bit more about sleep? I know. Absolutely. Uh, someone who never gets enough myself. Um, be interested in just sort of your thoughts and, you know, how can we do that better and how do we sort of manage that? I know um, I've actually slept more since COVID-19 on a regular basis than I did beforehand. Uh, I have a sleep tracker on my phone um, that is now proud of me and it's never been proud of me before. <laughs> Um, I think I was averaging um, about 5.1 hours of sleep a night before this and now I, I, I broke the seven hour mark, uh, which is pretty magical. Um, I assume I'm nicer to be around at the same time because of that. So I just, I guess I'm just wondering if you have thoughts, tips, ideas, um, ways that we can all sleep better, sleep more regularly, mm -hmm. et cetera, whatever you have in mind, I'd love to hear it and have you share if you don't mind. Absolutely. Well, I'm happy to hear that you have been um, able to, to use this time for additional sleep. Um, and I've sort of been hearing maybe two ends of the continuum that either people are sleeping better and able to have um, more priority over their sleep schedule, or there's also this other group who is experiencing more disruptive sleep, particularly strange dreams. And so just kind of wanting to normalize that if you're falling in that category, you are not alone. That seems to be kind of a phenomenon that's happening for folks currently. But just in terms of general sleep hygiene, there are a few things that I definitely recommend um, one is, as I had mentioned earlier, just having a bit of a routine that you utilize before going to sleep. So things to signal to your body that it's time to shift from the busyness of the day into a slowing down process. So things like um, avoiding screen time, starting to have some rituals, maybe making a warm cup of tea, maybe um, having a certain blanket or comfort object that kind of signifies that this is your time to, to switch towards mm -hmm. sleep. People will find that there are helpful apps such as a background noise, maybe some nature sounds that can help you uh, to focus and be present on that sleep piece. And then finally, that routine part that I was mentioning that is so helpful for just our overall well being is really important for sleep. So, trying to maintain as much as possible a regular sleep time. So, going to bed around the same time and getting up around the same time, which right now I think can be really tempting to sort of disregard because there aren't necessarily the same requirements and um, expectations of times to be places. And so setting up a routine that works for you and your schedule is really important. Yeah, one thing I found, um, I have one of the Alexa, you know, Amazon Alexa devices. Um, I didn't know this until I got the most recent one, but they have a sleep sounds piece on there. Um, mm -hmm. Distant thunderstorm is my favorite if you care. Um, and I love it because without paying for it, it's an hour. So it will play whatever sound you want for an hour. And it's you know, there's thunderstorm, there's, you know, rainstorm, there's ocean, there's you name it. Uh, and I found that to, the nights that my brain won't stop, uh, I put that on and it just sort of adds enough of a, enough, you know, I don't like the, like the white sound ones, just mm -hmm. I need a little bit. Um, so it's, it's an interesting addition that I've really helped, has helped me on the days that my brain just won't slow down. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it can be helpful too to sort of do a brain dump if you find that there are so many ideas in your head to either on your phone or a, um, like a post-it note, just sort of jot down, all right, these are the things I'm gonna attend to tomorrow and then be able to allow yourself to just say, I, I have written that down, I'm gonna take care of that tomorrow and now what I'm gonna do is focus on the, the nature sounds that Dr. Miller mentioned or the music sounds that Carson's mentioning and just kind of allowing yourself to have that time and know that you've written down all the things that are on your mind currently. Right. My understanding is too that the app um, Headspace, which I think is fairly popular, is offering some um, kind of additional benefits right now at no charge. 
Um, and that's probably one of many apps that could be helpful um, if you are somebody who struggles with falling asleep. That can be a time where those anxious or worried thoughts really come up in a way that can be troublesome. Yeah, agreed. Well, I wanna hear a little bit from the students. Um, so we're wondering if, what tips or tricks do you have that work for you? How do you focus, manage your own stress? Um, so I'm wondering, uh, what you all have on your mind? What do you what do you use that has helped you? And you can either put it in the chat or turn on your mic and let us know directly. Y'all are hiding, but we know you're there. What do you use? I know after the first one, there'll definitely be a second one. <laughs> Does anyone have signs of when they know they need to get mm. sort of, you know, check in and, and recenter? I see some head nods there. People are thinking about when they need need to check in and have some time for some self care. Scarlett posted in the chat too, going on walks when you get stressed, that's a great way to just kind of like calm down. So thanks for sharing, Scarlett. And Scarlett, as the first person to share, you have won our first Klein's gift card. Um, so you can send a um, direct chat to Rebecca with your address and we'll get that to you. Anyone else want to share? Yeah, sure. To jump onto Scarlett's uh, comment about going on walks for sure. I think one of the times when I realized that I'm in a bad spot is when I haven't been out of my house in, you know, three days, four days, haven't actually stepped out the door and gone outside or, you know, opened a window or something. But just getting the fresh air is, it makes a huge difference. And so if I can count back the days and realize, oh, geez, it's been a long time since I've gone out my own door. I know that that's probably time for a walk. <laughs> and I, I think that's so true because I, I think it's so easy just to get sort of trapped in the space because we're not supposed to interact with people. So we assume if we go outside, we will. But uh, Jamie and I have been taking uh, Duke Dog on walks um, and we do run into people, but there's also no one driving. So we're able to sort of cross the street without worrying about it. And then we don't, you know, we're separate from people. So I think that, I think we do need to get outside. I know for me, the when I feel too cooped up, that's when I know things aren't going well. So Zoe, please uh, send Rebecca a note also with your address so we can get you a Klein's gift card as well. Thanks for sharing. Uh, can we maybe get one more? Uh, I know Megan, a couple other people just got on. We're asking what you're doing to manage your stress, manage uh, sort of everything that's going on in your lives right now, looking for a couple tips, anything that everyone, anyone's doing that helps them. I'll just read out loud. It looks like Brianna said that she's been writing in her journal and calendar to stay organized. Um, that can be really helpful, again, to have some routine and some structure. So using a calendar to be organized, using a journal to kind of have a place to put your thoughts and maybe work through them a little bit. Uh, those sound like some really good ideas. Thanks Great. for sharing that. Yeah, and Brianna, you're our final winner. Please send Rebecca a note uh, with your address and we'll get you a client's gift card. Um, so we're going to transition. Nina, thank you so much. I hope you'll stay with us for the rest I'd of the call. I'd love to. Thank you. Um, but very excited to have Sherry Schofield here. Sherry's going to help us with our mindfulness and helping us. Um, I, I don't want to take away from it by saying this wrong. So uh, Sherry, for me, is really one of the people in, in the world in my world that I know that really gets this and knows it and can really bring it to the table for you all. So I'm excited uh, as someone who struggles a great deal with my own mindfulness at times. I think I'm more the first image of the mindful instead of the mindful. Um, I don't know if that's how you pronounce them differently, but I think Sherry really has this figured out in a lot of ways and is a really great guide. So I'm excited that she's here to guide you all and me uh, tonight for the session. So Sherry, thanks for joining us and the, the floor is yours, so to speak.
Oh, I think you're still muted. Oh. I'll get it. One of these days. Thank you so much. That was a very nice invitation or um, introduction. I want to say that it's not so far for me to include mindfulness in those foundations of wellness. So yeah, we're going to talk about decent nutrition and good exercise and finding um, deep restful states to replenish ourselves with and mindfulness practices. One of the great misunderstandings is what the word mindfulness implies. It really is an umbrella word for a skill set. So one of the queries that I saw when I was in invited to do this program asked the question, what can I do to become less distracted by uh, everything going on in my environment? And I think, first of all, reframe the question and say, what can I do to train my attention, my awareness? And if we look at it in that way and you see that your attention, your awareness, your ability to concentrate is a muscle that you can exercise very much like you go to the gym to exercise the body, then you build this muscle of awareness and attention and it becomes a tool in your, in your tool belt. It's a skill set. So at this moment in the semester, it's very much of a crash course. I can give you a, a couple of techniques that you can use and encourage you to allow yourself to feel what you're feeling. There are many reasons right now, in particular, to be anxious about things. You know, we're all having to lean into what we don't know and what we cannot predict. So you may be feeling anxiety about exam time. You may be feeling enhanced pressure and so forth. So can you find a way to be leaning into that? Can you find a way to breathe with those feelings of anxiety? Because I want you to know anxiety is not a premonition, nor is it intuition. Anxiety is something that you can allow to yourself to experience. You know, humans want to encourage all the wonderful, blissful emotions and experiences and really shun the ones that don't feel so great or make us nervous and unhappy. But truly, all of the emotions in the human experience are available simply to be experienced. The other thing that I would say before I give you a couple of techniques is um, it's important to really nurture the idea that you can befriend yourself. There aren't many magic pills in the world. I would say mindfulness is the only one that I found that has a really solid track record. As we know, it's evidence-based. But really learning how to be self-nurturing. So put your hand over your heart and say, wow, what I'm feeling right now doesn't, isn't pleasant. It doesn't feel very good. Can I still breathe? Where in my body am I feeling the anxiety? Where am I feeling fearful? Can I take a nice deep breath and just allow it to be there? And then can I offer myself some nurturing? Hey, it's a feeling. I'm a human having a feeling. This one's kind of unpleasant. I can still breathe. And why not a little pep talk? Hey, it's gonna be okay. Everything's gonna be all right. I'll be here with this feeling until the feeling softens. As I continue to breathe, the feeling softens. It softens and I can now let it go as it is letting go of me. For starters. <laughs> And now I'm going to put you all to sleep. <laughs> I would use a nice body um, scan for going to sleep. And um, I'm not going to try that now. What I'd like you to consider is the use of nice deep breaths. And if you, I've noticed recently, this is the first time in the longest time that I've gotten a little glommed on to the news. I'm paying rather more attention to network news than I have in decades. 
And so I'm watching these trends of reports as this ongoing virus story um, unfolds. And most recently, in the last week or so, I'm starting to notice caregivers talk about um, techniques using your breath. What's so helpful about teaching breath work is that um, for the most part, your students are breathing. So it's something we, we, can very, we can talk about and have in common. And I'd like to teach you one technique that certainly um, soothes the sympathetic nervous system, turns on the parasympathetic nervous system, so it takes you away from fight, flight or fight and into a more calm um, disposition, body, mind, and spirit. And what we're going to do is do a counted breath, and it's in a box. So we're going to inhale for four, hold the breath for four, exhale for four, and hold again for four. And if you're ready, I'll count it out. It's a little tricky to count it for a group because everyone's rate of breathing is very much individual to themselves. It's always unique. So if I'm going too slow because my breath tends to come in slow, in a slow pattern and you're breathing more quickly, ignore the count and find it yourself. But let's all exhale together and take a nice deep breath in. Exhale again and inhale, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, Exhale, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, and close your eyes if you're comfortable. Inhale, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, exhale, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four. Inhale, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, exhale, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, and just continue. And I'm going to go ahead and ring the state singing bowl to bring you back to your regular consciousness at this time in this place. Enjoy this. <laughs> I borrowed it. It's been signed out. No worries. <laughs> I, I just love it so much. Anyway, I can still hear it. So these are skills. And really, taking five minutes every day just to tune into your breath, the time itself will grow because it is so enriching and calming, but also allows you an opportunity to notice what is happening in your mind. Because so often, the default setting of our mind is to go willy-nilly, it's monkey mind. Mostly, we don't even need to attach to those thoughts. They're not really our own, necessarily. We're bombarded, aren't we, with information and news and pressure and the media. Um, so when you take some time and just learn to anchor to your breath, 
you're able to notice trends, proclivities, um, what you tend to obsess about, where your concerns tend to lie. And it gives you also then an insight into your own operating. And I think each and every one of us has an opportunity to be the world's greatest expert on one thing, and that's themselves. So why wouldn't you take that time and cultivate those skills? Do we have time for just a straight mindful sit, seated meditation? I spoke with, um, I had a couple of students show up again for uh, a class that I was teaching today, a fundamentals mindfulness class. And I asked them because after practicing for a month, they realized that the benefits of these practices start to show up over time. And it's really your commitment to practicing daily that yields the enrichment and the possibilities for enhancement of your experience of your own life. Um, and I said, so I get what, 15 minutes to try and give people some skills quickly that might help alleviate some of the pressure, fear, anxiety. And um, one of the students said that she thought the pacing that I instructed them to do, which is also known as mindful walking. <laughs> she said pacing, and I thought, well, truly, there's not that much difference, except for what we're doing is we're training ourselves to attend to one thing, a sole point. In the case of seated meditation, we decide within ourselves on an anchor. And the anchor is a sensation that stands out just enough for us to be able to guide our awareness back to that sensation in the body whenever the mind roams, which we know it's gonna do. We also practice with a disposition of non-judgment. So, be particularly aware if when your mind wanders off, you start to have a little inner dialogue, a little in critique of your own ability going on. Notice it, let it go. You know, it's information that you might find useful at another time, or it might be a script that you'd like to replace. And that's a choice you can also make too. But anyway, let's just do a basic mindful seated meditation. And it's not gonna take that long I'm first gonna invite you to find a comfortable posture, a little more elegant than maybe your usual, enough so the breath can flow unimpeded, all the fluids in the body. Get your shoulders back a little bit, maybe tuck your chin so that you're pulling up from the crown of the head, your head directly on the spine that supports it. And then the sound of this bell is the signal for you to soften your gaze, cast it down or in, go ahead and close your eyes and just turn your awareness in, in, inward. Turn your attention inward to your own inner landscape and I'll guide it from there. Simply inhaling and exhaling. Turning your attention to exploring sensations in your body related to simply breathing. For now, that's all. Your to-do list will be there when we're finished. Nothing will be lost if we simply take some time to explore our own breath. Exploring with interest the air as it enters the body, the rise and fall of your shoulders, the expanding and contracting rib cage, the rise and fall of the belly. Conjuring some interest in your own sensations related to simply breathing.
And you may have noticed already that the mind has wandered off. That's what the mind does, simply notice. And with tenderness towards yourself and gentleness, guide your awareness back to exploring sensations in your body related to breathing. Scan those sensations for the one that stands out just a little bit for you and determine that sensation to be your anchor. And now as you simply practice breathing, inhaling and exhaling, when you notice the mind has wandered off, gently guide it back to the anchor. This is the practice, nothing more. Notice, come back to the anchor. Pay particular attention if you have a tendency to critique your performance, analyze the situation, evaluate your performance, and let that go too. Simply come back to the moment by returning your awareness to the anchor you've selected related to your breathing. Allowing everything else in your experience to be just the way it is. Distracting noises in the environment, a sudden cool breeze, a twitch or an itch in the body. Notice these things, make any adjustment necessary and return again to your anchor. I'll ring the bell three times, transfer the anchor to the sound, the resonance of the bell, and when you can no longer hear it, gently open your eyes and return to your awareness of this moment. I understand that it's possible to experience a world of resistance. First of all, the body's gonna kick up a storm, right? Oh, I just don't wanna sit still right now. Or you'll get that phantom itchy spot and the thing is gonna drive you crazy. You know, notice all these things. With practice, they, end to, they, set, they tend to ease up on their own. What you resist will persist. You know, if you talk angrily to your wily mind about settling down, it's gonna go out for reinforcements and come back with a story you haven't thought of for 20 years. 
<laughs> you know, it's, the mind is miraculous. Um, questions, thoughts. How was that experience for you? Is everyone ready for sleep now? <laughs> I do see some eyes that look a little sleepier now than they did before we started. Uh, but I really enjoyed that, Sherry. I appreciate you uh, taking us through it. I want to also add that relaxation, being able to feel more relaxed, certainly I think will help your performance when it comes to exam time. But I promise you, it is the surface of the kinds of ben benefits that a life can be rewarded with by virtue of just taking the time for self regularly. Well, Sherry, the other thing I think is really important is that while I know a practice can take a long time, I think I would argue that all of us experienced a change in ourselves in two really short periods of time just then, of breathing and then the meditation that you did. So I think I think we often talk ourselves out of these moments when all they really take are moments. Truly, um, if it's three minutes a day that starts you on a practice, it won't be long before that has grown itself to five. Um, the neuroscientist Amishi Jha, University of Florida says 12 and a half minutes, not 12, not 13, by golly, it's 12 and a half. So that's not so many if you think about this precious opportunity to be a human exploring your magnificent potentials, right? And becoming the most magnificent version of yourself that you can imagine, what's 15 minutes a day? Yeah. Well, and Sherry, just because I know um, maybe if there's a takeaway for folks, I know I downloaded Insight Timer and Headspace after a meeting with Ed Brantmeyer. Uh-huh. Um, I don't know if you have, if you recommend those, if you have others that you, it, you know, have worked well for you that you recommend normally to folks. I use Insight Timer. I, um, I'm pretty much a fan of learning to do self-guiding. But I also highly recommend, and particularly if people aren't finding that they're able to get the rest that they really need to function optimally, to look up on YouTube guided meditation known as Yoga Nidra. Yoga Nidra, N-I-D-R-A. And in particular, I, I like the um, facilitation of a woman from no Northern Virginia, or she, may, she might be in Maryland, named Robin Carnes, C-A-R-N-E-S. And it's a way to get a deep restorative rest when you need it, um, and it's guided. It's the meditation on complete non-effort, including the effort to stay awake. Highly recommend. So Zoe, do you want to put in your pitch for mindfulness? <laughs> Sure. <laughs> or salsa dancing, which is it? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's more of a solo thing nowadays, <laughs> but um, either way, both can, can highly recommend it. Just, you know, pretty much everything that you've mentioned, being able to, I mean, it really helps you to be alone with yourself. Like you were saying, Megan, it helps you learn to sit with yourself and befriend yourself, as you were saying, Sherry. It makes a big difference. Thank you. <laughs> well, Sherry, I think we've got enough requests to have you back for uh, our summer series. So we may, uh, not may, we will actually be back in touch with both of you at some point to have you back over the summer. Uh, we're going to explain what's happening over the summer here in a minute, but we really appreciate you both taking the time to be here with us. And uh, I think it matters to those on this call, but also will matter to those that watch the video later. Um, so we'll definitely have you both back to join us uh, in the summer. Thank you, happy to be here. So, so I'm gonna move us towards the end here. I, I'm getting that, that look from the, the host <laughs> here that's time for me to keep us moving. Uh, again, like I said, I only fake like I'm in charge of anything here. Um, I'll probably screw this up and Carson will never let me do it again. So announcements, a um, couple different things we just wanna share. Um, Madison Cares is still there for students. Uh, just recommend that if you or yourself or someone else that you um, know needs some help, is just struggling, just needs someone to check in, 
Madison Cares is here to do that. Um, I'll pass this to Carson. Yeah, thanks, Tim. Um, just to highlight something that's out there for you, we have, we call it the hub for virtual programming, but it also has resources for you. So the departments and student affairs and also reaching outward to the learning centers and the libraries um, have all kind of put helpful and updated links on this site. I, will, I can also put that in the chat, but just know that that's there. It's kind of like a one-stop shop for you and hopefully that is helpful, especially as you're looking for some finals help. There is a section at the top that's there just for finals as we know that that's something that you all are experiencing right now. So feel free to check that out if you're looking for some extra resources. And this summer coming your way, Tuesday Night Live. Uh, again, we're hoping we don't get sued. Um, we decided <laughs> um, we're going to take next week off. Uh, it's exam week. We were originally going to power straight through, but we feel like uh, a lot of you may not be able to join us. So um, we're going to take the fifth off uh, and let you do what you need to do uh, to get ready. But then we will be back with a student host. Carson, our student host is Oh gosh, sorry. Kuda. And you know what? Kuda Zamuda. I just blanked on his last name, of course, right then. Um, but Kuda will be here to host a part of the segment. And I'm really excited because he's super funny. And then we'll continue to have other student hosts. So if you're interested, let us know. Feel free to drop your name in the chat. Yeah, so we're going to have a student host every single week this summer. Um, uh, even if you're not interested, if you've been part of this for a long time, Megan, then maybe we'll just make you a host at some point. And Nico? Uh, who've been here lots of weeks. I just think that you all enjoy it. And then I am really excited because our first guest of the summer uh, is the best part of my life, Jamie Jones Miller. Um, my wife, she's going to come on and she's going to talk us through two different areas. We're also going to put her through a few things. We may have to try the hot seat that I went through a couple weeks ago. Um, but she's going to talk about two areas. One, her tips on networking. Uh, I, I actually don't know anyone on earth who's a better networker than Jamie and the, I'm sure this is one of her tips, but one of the main things I know is that Jamie gets to know people before she needs them. Um, and I think that's what most networkers fail at is they only call you when they need something from you. Jamie has gone out of her way to build and make relationships before she never, before she ever needs them without ever knowing if she will need them. And in the end that pays off. Um, and has built such an incredible, um, JMU network. I remember when she was in the Pentagon, people were just coming out of the woodwork with JMU connections because she had a JMU thing on her door and, you know, talked to a couple people with JMU stuff. And then she was in a video for JMU for um, being a, a prominent alum and brought a brand new um, recent alum with her to be in the video with her to give her that experience and opportunity. Uh, and then she's also then going to talk about her um, leadership guiding principles and what guides her leadership every day. Uh, and again, we'll probably involve her in a couple other fun things, um, but very excited. So the 12th of May, uh, we'll be back for Tuesday Night Live at JMU featuring Jamie Jones Miller, hosted by Kudas Muda, uh, with other hosts to come for the rest of the summer. I uh, hope you all will continue to join us. And then I know Carson just put in the chat um, that we now have the recorded vi uh, versions of these I have now gone up. And I'll be putting those out on social media. But if you want to go back, if you missed one, want to catch up, um, always good to go back and see those or see yourself on video. Um, and then that's the end of this slideshow. Carson, Rebecca, what are we missing? You are all good. That's it. Can you all hear me? Yes. Yay. Just in Sherry, time. Nina, thank you so much. Thanks everyone for joining us this evening. We wish you the best of luck next week during exams. Take time to breathe, take time to sit with yourselves and acknowledge the hard work that you've done this semester and the hard work that you put through to get through something none of us were expecting. And we're incredibly proud of you. And we hope to see you back on May 12th so we can hear about how your week went and the end of the semester. And we hope you'll join us for the rest of the summer on Tuesday nights. And we're certainly going to miss having you all around even virtually um, for a semester, but we hope you'll still check in in the summer. And we wish you the best next week. Take care, everybody. Have a great night. Thanks. Good night. Bye. Have a great night.